this is my student support system keep watching keep learning hello welcome to my student support system in today's class we will discuss about female reproductive system this lecture is in english and if you want to study in hindi just click on i button and you will get link of hindi lecture or you can directly visit to channel my student support system what is reproduction reproduction is the process of producing offspring human reproduction is a sexual reproduction and human reproduction includes male reproductive system and female reproductive system male reproductive system we have already discussed in today's class we will discuss about female reproductive system the organs of female reproductive system are divided into two groups for study purpose internal organs and external organs internal organs include ovary fallopian tubes uterus and vagina and external uh, organs includes vulva that is pudendum and mammary glands now we will discuss them one by one first organ is ovary the ovaries are female gonads and are paired glands that resemble almond in shape and size they are homologous to testes in males the ovaries are situated one on either side of the uterus you can see here this one is uterus and two ovaries are there on either side means one ovary on one side actually like testes they develop in the abdomen but in later uh, part of uh, development in the fetus they descend to the brim of pelvis or brim of the superior portion of the pelvic cavity during third month of fetal development a series of ligaments hold the ovaries in position one is broad ligament which is a, uh, actually ligament of uterus which is a part of parietal peritoneum attaches to the ovaries by double layer fold of peritoneum called mesoverium the ovarian ligament anchors the ovaries to the uterus and the suspensory ligaments attaches them to the pelvic wall so we can say that there are three ligaments which hold the ovaries in place these are broad ligament and ovarian ligament and suspensory ligament now the structure of ovary you can understand or this structure by this picture the outermost layer of the ovary is germinal epithelium so this one is germinal epithelium and just below the germinal epithelium which is made up of a simple epithelium there is tunica albuginea which is whitish capsule all around the ovary just below the germinal epithelium which is made up of dense connective tissue located immediately deep deep to the germinal epithelium the ovarian cortex is a region just deep to tunica albuginea so this part this one is the cortex okay it consists of ovarian follicles surrounded by dense irregular connective tissue that contain collagen fibers and fibroblast like cells known as stromal cells the ovarian medulla this is deeper part this one the ovarian medulla is deep to the ovarian cortex the border between ovarian cortex and medulla is not clear 
but the medulla consists of more loosely arranged connective tissue which contains blood vessels lymphatic vessels and nerves now what are ovarian follicles ovarian follicles are situated in the cortex of ovaries and they consist of oocytes in various stages of development along with the cells surrounding them they are called follicular cells and granulosa cells so here these are the developing follicles they contain oocyte as well as some other cells known as follicular cells and granulosa cells the surrounding cells nourish the developing oocyte and begin to secrete estrogens as the follicle grows a mature griffin follicle is large fluid filled follicle that is ready to rupture and expel its secondary oocyte and a corpus luteum consists of remnants of mature griffin follicle after ovulation the corpus luteum produces hormones until it degenerate into fibrous scar known as corpus albicans now we come to oogenesis the formation of female gametes in the ovaries is termed as oogenesis oogenesis begins in the females before they are even born oogenesis starts during fetal life from the cell known as oogonia oogonias are diploid cells means 2n number uh, of chromosomes uh, or 46 chromosomes they are stem cells most oogonia degenerate inside the ovaries but few of them develop into primary oocyte which contains 46 chromosomes each primary oocyte is surrounded by a single layer of flat follicular cells and entire structure is called primordial follicle the primordial follicle remains inactive till puberty starting from puberty each month a few primordial follicles start to grow developing into primary follicles under the effects of fsh and lh secreted by pituitary gland each primary follicle consists of a primary oocyte that is surrounded in a later stage of the development by several layers of cuboidal and low columnar cells called granulosa cells so here this one is primary follicle this is oocyte surrounded by many layers of granulosa cells there is a basement membrane that surrounds the outermost layer of granulosa cells as the primary follicle grows it forms a clear glycoprotein layer called zona pellucida between the primary oocyte and granulosa cells stromal cells surrounding the basement membrane begin to form an organized layer called theca folliculi with continuing maturation primary follicle develop into secondary follicle in a secondary follicle the theca differentiate into two layers the theca interna and theca externa the granulosa cells begin to secrete follicular fluid which build up in a cavity known as antra inside the uh, center of secondary follicle so here you can see this is the antrum which contains fluid the innermost layer of granulosa cells become firmly attached to the zona pellucida and is now called corona radiata this one the secondary follicle eventually becomes larger turning into mature or griffin follicle the diploid primary oocyte completes meiosis 1 producing two haploid cells of unequal size one is larger and one is smaller both contains 23 chromosomes actually the larger one is main cell which take parts into reproduction that is called secondary oocyte and smaller one is called 
first polar body. The mature Griffin follicle soon rupture and release the secondary oocyte and this release is known as ovulation. At ovulation, the secondary oocyte is expelled into the pelvic cavity along with the first polar body and corona radiata. Normally, these cells are received by the uterine tubes. If fertilization does not occur, these cells degenerate. What is fertilization? If the sperm are present in the uterine tube and one sperm that penetrates the secondary oocyte, this system is known as this process is known as fertilization. Then the secondary oocyte splits into two haploid cells, and this process is meiosis two. Again of unequal size, one is larger that is known as ovum, and one is smaller that is secondary polar body. The nuclei of sperm cell and this ovum now unite and form the diploid zygote. A sperm cell usually encounters and fertilizes the secondary oocyte in the ampulla of the uterine tube. Fertilization can occur at any time up to about 24 hours after ovulation. The diploid fertilized ovum is now called zygote and begins to undergo cell division and moving towards the uterus. It arrives into the uterus on 6th to 7th day after ovulation. Now we come to what are the fallopian tubes. There are two fallopian tubes or uterine tubes. These are one, this is two on both side of uterus. They start from the uterus and reach up to the ovary. The tubes measures about 10 centimeter length and they lie between the folds of broad ligament of the uterus. They provide root for sperm to reach to the ovum and transport the secondary oocyte and fertilized ovum towards the uterus. Fallopian tubes have four main parts. One is isthmus, which is medial, just near to the uterus. This one is isthmus, thick walled portion and attached to the uterus. Second portion is ampulla, this one. It is the widest and longest portion of the uterine tube and it starts from the isthmus and ends at the infundibulum. Third part is infundibulum which is the funnel shaped portion of the fallopian tube and is close to the ovary. And last portion is fimbriae which are finger like projections attached to the infundibulum very near to the ovaries and they receive ovum secondary oocyte after ovulation. The uterine tubes are composed of three layers of tissue which are mucosa, muscular layer and serosa. The mucosa consists of epithelium and areolar connective tissue. The epithelium consists of ciliated simple columnar cells which help move a fertilized ovum within the uterine tube towards uterus. The muscular layer is composed of two types of fibers, inner thick circular ring of the smooth muscle and outer one is longitudinal muscle fibers. Peristaltic contractions of the muscular and ciliary action of the mucosa help to move the oocyte or fertilized ovum towards the uterus. What is uterus? The uterus is pear shaped structure and situated between bladder and rectum. In females who have never been pregnant, its size is 7.5 centi centimeter length, 5 centimeter width and 2.5 centimeter thick. The uterus have three parts which are fundus, this upper part is fundus, then middle part is body and lower part is cervix. The body of uterus projects anteriorly and superiorly like this. 
making an angle over the urinary bladder. This position is called anti-flexion position of the uterus. The cervix projects inferiorly and posteriorly and enter into the anterior wall of vagina at nearly right angle. This one. This makes the angle with the vagina. The uterus is supported and held in position by many ligaments which are number one broad ligament. It is a paired broad ligaments are uh, double fold of peritoneum attaching the uterus to either side of the pelvic cavity. Next one is uterosacral ligaments. These are again paired uterosacral ligaments. These are also peritoneal extensions lie on either side of the rectum and connect uterus to the sacrum. Next is cardinal ligaments. The cardinal ligament are located inferior to the base of broad ligament and extend from pelvic wall to the cervix and vagina. Round ligament. The round ligaments are bands of fibrous connective tissue between the layers of broad ligament. They start from the uterus just inferior to the uterine tube to a portion of the labia majora of the external genitalia. The uterus consists of three layers of tissue, peritoneum, uh, sorry, perimetrium, myometrium and endometrium. Perimetrium is a part of visceral peritoneum. It is composed of simple squamous epithelium and areolar connective tissue. Anteriorly, it covers the urinary bladder and forms a shallow pouch known as vesico-uterine pouch. Posteriorly, it covers rectum and forms a deep pouch between the uterus and rectum known as the recto-uterine pouch or pouch of Douglas. Myometrium. The middle layer of the uterus is myometrium which consists of three layers of smooth muscle fibers that are thickest in the fundus and thinnest in the cervix. The thicker middle layer is circular. The inner and outer layers are longitudinal and oblique. Endometrium. The endometrium is highly vascularized layer and has three components. The innermost layer composed of simple columnar epithelium having ciliated and secretory cells. The underlying endometrial stroma is a very thick region of the lamp or lamina propria and is composed of areolar connective tissue. The endometrial glands develop as in vegetation of the luminal epithelium and extend almost to the myometrium. The endometrium is divided into two layers. The stratum functionalis or functional layer lines the uterine cavity and slough off during the menstrual menstruation. The deeper layer is stratum basilis and is permanent which give rise to new stratum functionalis after each menstruation. Thank you students for watching this video. Remaining part of uh, female reproductive system we will discuss in next class that will be part 2. Thank you. Have a nice day.